Hello. I want to do a couple of things in this video. Um, first, in case your class has not yet used some particular language, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page about some language. Um, you've used the ideas, we just haven't, because of the different flows of different classes, we haven't used these words with everybody. Um, it's a small issue. And the bigger issue for today is I want to create a new kind of diagram, what we call a vector addition diagram. So before we can make a vector addition diagram, we need to know the word vector and what it means. So we've dealt with lots of different kinds of measurements. Um, and some of our measurements do involve direction and some of our measurements don't involve direction. And so we've got like two different classifications for the measurements that don't have anything to do with uh, direction we call scalars and measurements that tell us both an amount of the measurement and a direction we call vectors. So uh, an example to get us started, speed versus velocity. We know that speed tells us how fast something is. Velocity, the slope of a position versus time graph, tells us both how fast that thing is and what direction it's moving. So the velocity tells us more information than the speed does. Likewise, the distance traveled, I ran five miles, um, just tells us how far, whereas displacement tells us I went five miles to the west, I went five miles to the east. We're subtracting starting uh, position from the ending position. We're doing final minus initial. And so if I started here and ended there, then my displacement is this way. And if I started there and ended here, then my displacement is that way. And so there's a direction for displacement position has a direction because I know if my origin is here, then if I'm you know going say 10 centimeters behind or 10 centimeters in front of that zero place, then I would have a negative or a positive position. So that tells us about direction from the origin. Um, time, temperature, mass, these are all measurements, but they don't have anything to do with the direction. You don't have a mass to the left. That doesn't make any sense. You don't have like an upwards temperature. Um, and the one that I really want to address right now is force, um, the newest of words that we've met this year. Force um, does include direction, so force is a vector. That was on one of your reading assignments, but I had forgotten at the time that I hadn't clarified that word with you. So we have a you know 10 Newton force to the right. Uh, we have a 30 Newton force downward. You know, Earth pulls the bowling ball down. The mallet pushes the bowling ball all to the right. So forces do have both an amount, how many Newtons, and a direction, left, right, etc. So that's language that we're going to use for the rest of the year. And I want to make a new kind of diagram then called a vector addition diagram. We can use these for adding together any kind of vectors. Um, we'll use them later on in the year for other kinds of vectors, but right now I really want to focus on adding together forces. And it's useful because if the forces are balanced in some situation, then the total of all of the forces is zero. So here is a fairly simple situation. There's a person standing, they're at rest, so there's an upwards normal force and a downwards gravitational force on that person, and those two forces are balanced. We know that because the person is at rest, and so the velocity of that person is not changing. So the total of these two forces has to be zero. Now, if I have an upwards amount and a downwards amount, and those are my only two things, then like upwards, I'm making up a number, upwards 500 plus downwards 500 adds up to zero. I could even say like positive 500 Newtons plus negative 500 Newtons, they add up to zero. But graphically, I wanna look at this visually. So I'm just copying my two arrows here. And when I make a vector addition diagram, then this is visually going to show me the total of my vectors where I just start at my dot. And so I draw one vector, it doesn't matter what order I choose. And then I'm going to start my next vector from the tip of the previous one. So I'm going to begin the second vector at the tip of that one. And you can see when I overlay those, then that brings me right back down to the blue dot. And so this diagram ends right at the place where it started is a way of showing visually that the total of these is zero. Now that one probably doesn't feel all that useful, but here's a slightly more complicated situation. 
you're pushing a box exactly horizontally um, at a constant speed. So there's an upwards normal force, a downwards gravitational force. You're pushing to the right. Now, if it's at constant speed, the forces have to be balanced. So there must be a frictional force then between the floor and the box to the left as those surfaces rub against each other. And these have to be balanced because the box is at a constant speed. So if I make copies of all of these forces, then I can make a vector addition diagram. And I can add these together in any order I like. So I could draw, say, this arrow. And then I just put the next one starting at the tip of the previous one. And then start from the tip of each arrow. And you can see that this box closes in on itself and it ends right where it began is a way that we can visually see that there's just as much up as there is down. There's just as much left as there is right. We can see that the totals of these forces are zero. By the way, if I knew amounts of some of these forces on the box, then I could figure out other amounts for those forces just based on the shape of that diagram. Or going back to the more complicated situation where you were pulling at a 30 degree angle, your tension force was angled partly left and partly up. Now that partly upwards pull also decreased the amount of squish between the floor and the box. So I have a smaller than usual normal force. I've got a frictional force to the right. I've got a gravitational force down. And just like before, I can add these forces in any order I like. And we can see here that this diagram is a little more complex in terms of shape, but it closes back in on itself and it ends where it began. And to show that I could go in any order I like, I could make, say, this one first, and then I could go, oh, let's say, up like so, and then I could come down from there, back, and the diagram closes in on itself. It doesn't matter what order I add these arrows in. So all of these we could see we had balanced forces because the boxes closed in, the shapes closed in on themselves, and my last arrow ended where my first arrow began. But let's take that same situation. Um, what if I pulled harder on that box? So with an increased tension force, or you didn't pull harder on the box, you pulled harder on the rope, so the rope pulled harder on the box. Now, with this increased tension force, that's also going to mean a smaller normal force because you're pulling upwards more on the box with that longer arrow, and a bigger upwards pull means less squish. So I could take these same arrows and I could, oops. And I could make a vector addition diagram with these. And what we'll see here is that this does not close in on itself. This total is not zero. I've got some amount starting from here coming over to there. I didn't draw this perfectly, but I've got a little leftwards a uh, bit unbalanced. And so I could think in this situation that this black arrow that I just drew and that should have been horizontal, that black arrow that I drew is how much our forces here are unbalanced. And so if I don't close that diagram in on itself when I get to the last arrow, then these forces are unbalanced. So I can see if the diagram closes on itself and ends where it began, the forces were balanced. And if not, the forces are unbalanced. And we can see here that we have an unbalanced force to the left. Or I've got a ball that's uh, rolling downhill and getting faster. It's speeding up as it rolls downhill. So my normal force um, is perpendicular to the surface of the hill. So that's not straight up, 
perpendicular to the surface of the hill is the normal force. The gravitational force is towards the center of the earth as always. And I made a very small frictional force because a ball rolling down, I'm imagining like rolling down a grassy hill, then there's gonna be a, some small frictional force, but it's not gonna be very much. So I could take these and I'm expecting before I make this vector addition diagram, this thing is speeding up. So this vector addition diagram should not close in on itself, should not end up back where it started. And I can see if I, and I can go in any order I like. So I'll do the downwards gravitational arrow, and then I'll do this upwards arrow for the normal force, and then this backwards uphill arrow for the frictional force, now I can see that this diagram does not close in on itself. It does not end where it began. And so I can see that I've got an unbalanced force pointing downhill. And when I think about that, it makes sense to me and it makes me happy to think about a ball that's rolling downhill getting faster. The forces have got to be unbalanced, and I would expect them to be unbalanced in the way that the velocity is changing. And so if I'm getting more and more and more downward velocity, then it makes sense to me to have a downward unbalanced force. So what's really helpful about these diagrams is that we can see when we make a vector addition diagram, it helps us see, are my forces balanced or are my forces unbalanced? They're very useful. We'll use them a lot.